Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming along. Um, delighted to welcome you here tonight uh, to an evening of uh, female brilliance. Um, before I introduce our um, conversation for the evening, uh, it's worth noticing, noting some of the other things that are going on in the gallery at the moment. On the first floor, on the ground floor rather, this is the first floor. On the ground floor, we've got uh, Katie Dove. And we're lucky to have some of her relatives here with us tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see that Katie's work is just uh, beautiful. And mm -hmm. uh, on this floor, further along, we've got our own Anne Bevan. You'll be able to see her work again too. It's, uh, it's been open a wee while, but brilliant. And above, another Arcadian artist, Margaret Tate. And on this floor, our collection, and in particular, um, the work that we've recently added to our collection through the generosity of Outset Scotland. Um, it's a work called Washable Colour by uh, Sarah Barker. Um, so on, our, on my left here we have uh, Dr Kirsty Skinner from Outset Scotland and Sarah Barker, the artist who you will be familiar with through the uh, big exhibition last year at the Fruit Market. Um, and we're delighted to have added this work to our collection through the generosity of Outset Scotland, which is a relatively new organisation in Scotland. It's been on the go uh, beyond Scotland for slightly longer, but Kirsty's been guiding it through um, its infancy into in maturity mm -hmm. and um, also in, deeply involved with collecting in Scotland over the period of the last 10 years, roughly equivalent to the period that we've been collecting here. Mm -hmm. So. I won't go on any further, but just to remind you that there are all these brilliant things on different levels to see here. Uh, yeah. Please welcome uh, Dr. Kirsty Skinner and Sarah Barker. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. That's, uh, that's kind and um, that's lovely to see so many folk. And, and anyone else who wants to come and adopt the lower level down here, you're welcome to. <laughs> Um, so, uh, oh, it's great to be here and, um, and to be able to talk with Sarah about this work in situ. Um, maybe I'll say a few words about Outset Scotland first. Um, Outset Scotland is dedicated to supporting contemporary art around the country. Um, we raise our funds by pooling the donations of our supporters, and there are several here today. And I think one, I think I can speak for them uh, in saying that they are all motivated to help collections and, and artists uh, to realise their ambitions, um, uh, but also they're just fascinated with the, with the art and the artistic process, and being involved in this way helps, that helps us all to be able to do that. So this is a prime example of being able to come to Orkney and experience this uh, extraordinary collection for themselves. Um, I first met Neil and Andrew, it was about 10 years ago, I think, and they had just sort of started uh, reaching a kind of level of confidence with collecting contemporary, which was a relatively new thing for you at that point, and um, part of that was through the National Collecting Scheme for Scotland, and I came to film an interview with them about what you've been doing for the last three Don't years. Don't show that. <laughs> I, won't, I won't tell you it is available online. <laughs> no, we, we, actually, interestingly, they, 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 they unfortunately were online briefly and then they disappeared again and now I have resurrected them. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> you, you spoke beautifully. You did. It was, and and um, it was, it was very, a very interesting process because there were six participating museums and Jill Headley of the Contemporary Art Society advised you and the other participants to try and um, identify a collecting focus that would enable them to bring contemporary works into existing collections, so find ways for those to um, be connected uh, to what was already uh, in the collections. Mm -hmm. And in choosing light and colour as a theme, they were exercising the curatorial prerogative to keep it very broad <laughs> in order to be able to bring almost anything <laughs> that they liked into the collection. However, it did, um, it did create the opportunity and the scope to allow the contemporary works coming into the collection to draw out some of the themes 
uh, and practices and, and ideas that were already existing in, in, in the collection here. And, and I think um, you know, that's, that's been extremely fruitful. And in, in a way, that's um, seeing, seeing this work and these works in, in that context brings an extra dimension to the, the collection that already exists as well. So uh, we're very, very proud to have been able to um, bring this work to the collection and, and uh, even more delighted that we've also been able to bring Sarah, because <laughs> this is Sarah's first visit. And um, I think it will be really, I think it will, it will emerge as we talk about uh, your, your responses coming in today so mm -hmm. for the first time to a collection which has probably been quite large in your imaginary. Yeah. Um, not not just not just because of this, but for other you know very obvious reasons about the amazing work that's in that's in here. So I guess we could start in the spirit of light and color and think about color um, yeah. and, and what color is meant for you and, and mm -hmm. what it's led you to. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, I always like to to start with something concrete, and yeah. for me, and, and that's often a title. Cause it's, there in black and white, and we can. After speaking so much about colour, let's start with the words. Let's start with black and white, washable colour. I remember at the time, I consider this an early work really, it's not mm. that long ago, but I can really remember painting it and feeling my way with the kind of palette and the making of it. Um, uh, so it really kind of reminds me of, of that kind of intensity of kind of learning about your own work and the kind of experience of making your own work. Um, and I called it washable colour because, I mean, there's a certain kind of flippancy about it and a certain kind of intensity about it. Like all of my work is always kind of two prongs, it's always kind of, almost, it's always kind of forces fighting one another. But I, I wanted it to feel, I wanted it to have that uh, sort of grandeur or luminosity or feeling of a kind of an early turn of watercolour or something, you know, <laughs> my greatest ambitions for it. And I also was well aware of my own context for making it. And, Kind of um, that kind of more local, everyday colour, colour of our own experience, and and kind of washed out colours, and you know, so as much referred to that Turner mm -hmm. watercolour as it did to kind of a label on clothes, for mm -hmm. washing clothes carefully, mm -hmm. or a box of detergent or something, um, mm -hmm. and that feels kind of you know, an interesting place to start in this part of the building, this borderline between this kind of old and new part of the mm -hmm. building, and, and something kind of uh, this modernist and Clearly influenced by modernist kind of contemporary piece, mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, and and how and, and in terms of uh, because there's there's obviously very um, it's kind of confusing when you first come up to this uh, because you have colour laid on as if it's as if it's painted it is painted um, and yet you thought you were approaching a sculpture so so. How has colour and painting, do you think, uh, your relationship to it has kind of evolved, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the time, I think, and you can tell, I think, that mm. I'm kind of struggling with that relationship between painting and sculpture. Um, and in later works, a kind of confidence came, or a carelessness, or a willfulness, where I kind of decided, oh, I can make great big paintings and sort of be liberated by my own critique of kind of sculpture and painting, mm. how they marry. Um, but here I'm really kind of feeling my way through and, I'm, and I think there's a feeling of them, them having to be intertwined. Uh, mm -hmm. um, those things for me at the time had to really kind of come together. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was making paintings on big sheets of canvas and I'm kind of cutting up and editing and sort of laying on the floor kind of aware of this kind of negative space, this kind of stuff around the painting as kind of being important and then and then propping the things up as you know and trying to make them deal with gravity and and this one and a few works that I made kind of around the same time where they really depend on the wall I suppose they really um, they really are evidenced by that fact because they you know they just about deal with gravity but they also need the wall and that kind of that human need I think and that kind of uh, there's a vulnerability about this piece, I think, because it needs that, that crutch. Um, mm. And even in the way it's painted, I think the painting of it kind of really evolves as you go around. You can see mm. many different types of painting, not only the painting on canvas, but painting on metal and painting on different types of surfaces and a kind of editing of them together. And um, interesting that Katie Dove has the exhibition on now mm. because 
I always did think of that chop and change between uh, a, a different kind of paint on a different kind of surface, it having a kind of jarring effect with another that um, that made you sort of stop kind of staccato and then another part of the sculpture having a kind of a flow mm -hmm. and the and the kind of edginess or intensity about that kind of liveliness or mm -hmm. life in a work that you know that you can allow the kind of the other stuff the gallery and the framing and uh, the domestic and all of those other things to kind of complete the work but what what you know a great artwork and or a, a meaningful mm. art what it needs to have is that kind of sparky something mm. and you know no no one's work has that more than than Katie's really yeah. um but uh, yeah looking at it again I kind of forgotten that a bit of that kind of I mean, I've seen it many times over the years but it's kind of come back into that kind of craggy you know there's a real kind of elemental um tactile sort of thing about the way it's kind of painted yeah. and rubbed off and mm. and and sculpted um, and there's an intimacy and there's a naivety, there's something, um, there's something for me that's kind of this interior because I remember kind of being, you know, these things are kind of canvas and, and it's not resilient and it, and it couldn't withstand the elements. And my later work did move outside and automotive paint had to be kind of robust and that felt to me of an exterior world then. But I was always trying to reflect a landscape. So I think there's always that kind of thing in my work where I'm, you know, I'm, trying to do many things or sit on the border of many things where it can be um, something interior and intimate and something that's more expansive and trying to talk about something else and a bigger sense of place and being. And it, that's so interesting that because um, the, many of the works through there are seascapes and landscapes but they have that sort of uh, feeling yeah. of a cabinet or a, a, a kind of shelter from the storm, a the sort of yeah. um, remembered impression rather than being out in, in, yeah. in there. At least it, that's how it feels now. Yeah. Um, and and um, in terms of the colour, you you were you were very struck, I think, when you came back, and, and of course the light was really shining on this part of the blue. Yeah. Um, and you said that's so interesting because there's a lot of blue in the sea here, but there's not blue in the Isle of Man. Which is the other island yeah. that you... It's just that very specific <laughs> yes. turquoise colour yeah. just flying over. I was yeah. really lucky that yeah. it was great weather, but yeah. um, it's just that real vivid turquoise, you know. I've had it on kind of like an exotic holiday when I was nine. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely didn't grow up with it. It's, I don't know if it's yeah. just the clear water or the light or... Because uh, I was going to ask you about coastal landscapes and, and, and it's another aspect of, of the geometries in that are inherent in your, in your collection. Um, that the, the, there is that geometry, but unlike something like minimalism, um, although, you know, I'm looking over here, and of course there is that too, but there's a, a lot of the geometries do seem to be associated with landscape, and, and it struck me that the geometry of landscape is particularly powerful here and, and in, in coastal areas where you have such strong horizontals. Mm -hmm. Um, and I read, and I had forgotten that you were brought up on an island as well. So I did wonder if yeah. that if you, if that featured in yeah. your interest in geometry. And yeah, and I do come back to it a lot. But I was saying to you earlier, I don't think I really um, understood landscape mm. or I don't even know if it's landscape or weather mm. or something kind of something of that kind of energy or uh, seascape to be part of my work really until I was um, on a residency at Cove Park, mm -hmm. started something concrete again. Um, Another coastal location. Yeah, then, then which is which is a residency centre on the west coast of Scotland. And um, and immediately I made works that kind of really, because I was in this um, converted uh, cabin that you stay in, and my kind of horizon line was kind of so dramatic. The first things I made were these kind of folded paper sculptures that I showed in the transmission gallery that year, which is 2005. And they, and they were just folded, they were just the horizon line yeah. that I saw outside my cabin. Um, and, so, and that was the first time that I, you know, really kind of deliberately, really literally kind of made it part of the work. Um, but more than that, I think it kind of entered into the language of, even in those pieces, I'd coloured in the, all of the paper before I folded it with graphite. Mm -hmm. And it was that process which took probably the whole month I was at Cove Park. The folding took about, you know, a few hours. <laughs> but the graphite colouring and the paper took days because for the first time in my life I'd had, or as a 
an artist yeah. really. The first time I'd consider myself an artist as well, but um, the first time I'd had that amount of time, you know, yeah. days just kind of stretched out forever and day and night, you could just kind of colour with craft. And, it was, and that kind of process, I suppose, and the direction of those movements and the sort of scratchiness of surface or the, the different gradations of grey that I got and the kind of ripples of paper and this, there was something that was definitely of the landscape without drawing the landscape. Um, and I think I kind of built on that. Um, there was definitely that sense. I had a show at Project Room the year after that mm -hmm. and I'd made sculptures that were um, cardboard impregnated with um, cement and it was, again, it was a real point where I was kind of testing material. I wasn't really sure if I was making 2D things or 3D things. Or, it was lots of uncertainty. Um, and I, on the Monday, and the show was opening on the Friday, I got all of the sculptures into the project room and I made tables for hoping that some work would kind of arrive on these tables. And <laughs> the tables had been beautifully made. There was quite a pressure to make something. Like, worthy. Like, of worthy them. of them, yeah. <laughs> Um, and they were kind of different heights, um, and I brought in my kind of sculptures, which were nice kind of flattened bits of cardboard, and tried to kind of prop them up in space. And they were all very grey. And kind of going back to colour, um, yeah. colour and landscape really, because it was colour and that kind of gradation of colour that was to do with landscape, I think. Mm -hmm. And with it being that kind of grainy cement thing, it was mm -hmm. colour to me has always been more than colour. I had to be convinced of it as a kind of medium. Mm -hmm. the, the materiality of colour has always been important to me. And so I was kind of struggling with these sculptures and this kind of greyness, and I wasn't sure I was so sort of frightened of colour in a way that I had to be so convinced of every kind of permeation of colour, every, uh, for every kind of hue, different hue to kind of come into the work. And, um, but I read this uh, poem at the time by a Greek poet, Diana Ritsos, Try to find this poem ever since, and I can't yeah. find it. It really is a ghost, ghost, and you can't ghost <laughs> poem that's kind of disappeared into the ether. Yeah. But um, I think it was called The Blue Woman, and and one of the lines in it was Hanging Away of Dressing. And I called the show Hanging Away of Dressing. So I must have come to have known about the poem when I was kind of planning the show, but it sort of drifted in, in out of my head. And it was about this um, actually the Aegean Sea, which is really turquoise. Mm. Um, but I don't think I thought of that at the time, I just thought blue, that's the kind of power and sort of somehow spirituality of blue, that kind of intense psychological blue. Um, and this, this, this was about this woman who dipped herself in the sea and her and all the buildings turned this kind of really vivid view, blue, these kind of different shades of blue. And so in a kind of panic moment, <laughs> honestly, I got my cement and squeezed tons of acrylic blue paint into it and started to paint the sculptures and in an effort to get the same blue each time you know when that kind of dried up I'd sort of squeeze more paint it was kind of drying differently and so as the sculptures went round every blue was slightly different and it was like that just subtle kind of tonal variation kind of brickwork and so the things started to look all of a sudden more like architecture or um, Things happened with paint that were structural and were powerful and were meaningful, which is kind of what I wanted from paint because I couldn't get to grips with the idea of paint being only decorative, mm. only the mm. surface of kind of decorating sculptures to make them kind of more flamboyant or mm. uh, something. So, so it was really, I had a good feedback from it. It was a good, you know, it kind of convinced me of that. Uh, the way I could use yes. paint and, and I think also it kind of protected me from feeling like a painter because mixing it with cement and PVA I was getting a kind of a residue of something else other than colour. There was a kind of storytelling about it that was of landscape and oceans and kind of froth and things that felt like it was adding a kind of subtext and an energy that kind of drove the works. And um, yeah, and then it was only blue, it was only blue, I kind of started really simple and the, and the cement, the, there was an unpredictability about the cement because I never really knew how it was going to dry, so I could be kind of quite brazen with colour and then allow the cement to kind of change it or more for or add kind of grey tones to it. Um, so that was definitely significant and, um, and then... I mean, I, I worked like that with a kind of faded, almost like a kind of cushion cover left in the sunlight, faded, or I've called it remembered colour, 
mm. before um, a sort of distant kind of sense of colour, something kind of not quite tangible or painted and then rubbed away mm. um, for quite a long time. And then in about 2013, I think what happened was I just, at the same time I'd been making work faster for shows and outside and inside, and I kind of just decided, well, actually, I have this practice that allows me to make paintings that I can then cut up and edit and make mm -hmm. into sculptures and make them deal with this geometric side mm -hmm. of the work. Um, and and, I do, and, I, and that's liberating, actually. And I think it just took me a while to recognise actually what my practice was, that at that, that, that moment where I've got those paintings, I can make many paintings that don't have to be used. And I such that all I can try all sorts of things out. And if mm -hmm. blue can have this kind of power, then there's other kind of optical things that can happen and, and strange, you know, I, I was a painter, I did do painting at art school and there was kind of still a love of, of painting, but there had to feel like many of the works in this collection, just, just to, yeah, to be justified strangely. Yeah, yeah but the, so then I, I did really kind of deliberately kind of change up that palette and make quite, uh, set quite kind of what felt like kind of radical uh, rules for myself so that um, you know, I can use neon or black and white or mm. you know, chalk or, but um, yeah, but, but that thing of, um, of landscape and geometry yeah. to go back to the initial question. Um, I think uh, my work in its, in its, in its two parts, there's, there's definitely a, a sort of, the, the bit I suppose I, I feel I'm fully absorbed in and, and really and really love is kind of this uh, kind of pain getting to grips with that painting or kind of what can happen in that surface detail but there's something that I always felt the work needed mm. to exist I suppose at first as an art student I felt needed to exist in an art gallery mm. or needed to exist outside my studio or something and that was um, and that was the kind of rigour of this structure or geometry mm. um, and so the works always had uh, always felt like it's needed to be kind of contained or framed or mm. held up or something mm. by something that came from a more difficult place actually it's something that's a ha that's that wasn't natural to me I struggle, maybe. I struggle to think about mm. things in three dimensions yeah I think so and I think the form started off very simply yeah. Um, for that reason, you know, like kind of windows and doors, I'm probably leading quickly onto. No, no, that's the, that's all. It's, 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 well, well, this is the thing because yeah. it all happens at once. Yeah. Isn't it? So every, yeah. and there's so much uh, contained in, you know, thinking about geometry and geometry being something that tends to clarify or refine or, or, or reduce a shape into something understandable. Yeah. But your geometries don't do that. <laughs> They're very. Um, perplexing in that you can never quite, uh, you know, there's, there's never a particular angle where you can see everything laid out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I wonder if that's because you did find it challenging to, to work in three dimensions, yeah. or if you were relishing the challenge and therefore yeah. wanted to yeah. replicate it for yeah. the, for the I viewers. think it is really interesting looking at all the works.